So you decided to click on this video to learn something about Dark Knight. And let's begin with a quick overview of your toolkit, starting with the job gauge. Dark Knight starts at level 30 with the tank stance and dark side gauge. Dark side is what activates when you use edge or flood skills and the gauge itself shows you the timer for its duration. At level 62 you will unlock the blood gauge allowing you to accumulate black blood which enables the use of special actions like Blood Spiller at level 62 and Quietus at level 64. Getting to level 70 then unlocks the Blackest Knight, which in turn expands your job gauge and adds the Dark Arch meter, allowing you a free use of an Edge or Flood skill if the TBN barrier shatters entirely. A separate timer is then added to the Dark Side gauge at level 80, which shows you the duration of your Living Shadow skill. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at your global cooldowns, also known as GCDs. First off, we have your basic combo, Heart Slash into Siphon Strike into Soul Eater. Siphon Strike restores MP, Soul Eater restores HP and also gives you 20 blood gauge. We then have your AoE combo, Unleash into Stalwart Soul. Stalwart Soul restores MP while also giving you 20 blood gauge. It works much like Siphon Strike and Soul Eater, the only difference is, is that it does not restore HP. Remember though, both of these are spells, not weapon skills, so keep that in mind. Unmend is your basic range attack, it is a spell like Unleash and generates enmity while also reducing the recast timer of Plunge by 5 seconds at later levels. We then have Blood Spiller, it's a single target hard hitting attack that can only be used when you have 50 blood gauge. After that, we have its multi-target counterpart, Quietus, which, much like Blood Spiller, can also be used when you have 50 Blood Gauge. Now that we've looked at the GCDs, let's go ahead and dive into your off GCDs, starting with Edge and Flood. Edge is a single target skill which grants Dark Sight, increasing your damage dealt by 10%. It uses 3000 MP. Flood is basically just like Edge, the only difference is, is that it is a straight line AoE and that is pretty much what it is. There is no difference aside from it being a multi-target skill. We then have Plunge, it is Dark Knight's Gap Closer. At later levels you will get two charges of this in your arsenal. After Plunge we have Carbon Spit and Abyssal Drain. Now the thing to note over here is that both of these skills share a recast timer of 60 seconds. Carbon Spit is a single target skill that deals damage and restores MP, while Abyssal Drain is a multi-target skill which not only restores HP but also MP. Then we have Salted Earth followed by its extension Salt and Darkness. Salted Earth is an AoE attack with a 90 second cooldown which persists for the duration of 15 seconds and uses U as the point of its origin. Enemies within the affected area will take damage for 15 seconds then its extension, Salt and Darkness, is a one-time attack that can be used at level 86 and onwards. Moving on, we have Living Shadow, which basically summons a clone of darkness on your side which attacks enemies automatically while having a cooldown of 120 seconds. Last but not the least, we have Shadow Bringer. It is your single most hard-hitting off GCD skill with two charges. Recast time is of 60 seconds per charge and can only be used under the effect of Dark Side. Now that we've gone over the GCDs and non GCDs, let's go ahead and take a look at the abilities and mitigations that Dark Knight has. Starting with Blood Weapon. It gives you 5 charges by the same name. Each GCD under Blood Weapon will restore MP and give you 10 extra Blood Gauge for each charge. We then have Delirium which gives you 3 charges and enables the use of Blood Spiller in Quietus without the cost of Blood Gauge. Charges last for 15 seconds and it has a cooldown of 60 seconds. Then we have Living Dead, your tank invul, which grants you a buff by the same name of course, for 10 seconds. If your HP goes down to 0, you get the buff Walking Dead for 10 seconds again, which enables you to heal yourself with GCDs with a potency of 1500. Now, healing to maximum HP during Walking Dead turns the buff into Undead Rebirth, during which most attacks will not reduce your HP below 1. Then we have Shadow Wall, it is your 2 minute defensive cooldown which mitigates incoming damage by 30% for 15 seconds. After which we have Dark Mind, which is your 1 minute cooldown and mitigates magic damage by 20% 
for 10 seconds. We then have Oblation, which has two charges and a recast timer of 60 seconds per charge. The skill mitigates incoming damage by 10% and can be used on self or party members. Blackest Knight is Dark Knight's signature mitigation skill. At the cost of 3000 MP, you erect a barrier on yourself or a party member, which absorbs damage equal to 25% of the target's maximum HP. Upon shattering, you're given a Dark Arts charge, allowing you to use the Edge or Flood skill without the MP cost. And last but not the least, we have a party wide defensive cooldown, which has a recast of 90 seconds and lowers magic damage taken by the party by 10% for a duration of 15 seconds. Its name is Dark Missionary. Now that we've gone over the skills and abilities of Dark Knight, let's go ahead and talk about the design and resources of the job. Dark Knight primarily uses MP and Black Blood as its primary resources to not only dish out damage, but also to mitigate incoming attacks. With a 120 second full burst window and a 60 second half burst window, your main focus while playing Dark Knight is to not overcap on your MP by using Edge, Flood, and TBN, but depending on the situation, along with the blood gauge while pressing your abilities on cooldown. But that's pretty much the design of Dark Knight. It's pretty simple, not rocket science at all. But with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at its opener and the foundation behind it. The job's opener consists of 11 unique key binds, some of which are pressed several times. The idea over here is to use your abilities on cooldown while pooling your major resources for party buff windows and making sure not to overcap on your two primary resources, which are most important, blood gauge and MP. But of course, the opener isn't everything. Once the initial burst is done, you have to know how to keep things rolling with your rotation. So let's go ahead and talk about that. After your initial burst window at the start of the fight, your goal is to keep things moving by using your GCD combo, weaving an edge and flood based on your targets to keep up dark side while also using blood weapon, delirium, CNS and plunge on cooldown. This allows you to align your skills on a 60 to 120 second window. Earlier, I mentioned a full burst and half burst. Now, after the initial burst at the start of the fight, every 60 seconds you will have a half burst with Delirium, Blood Weapon, and CNS, while every 120 seconds you'll have a full burst with those skills plus a Living Shadow and two charges for Shadowbringer. Now, if you use your skills on cooldown after the opener, your burst windows will align automatically and to be honest not a lot of calculation goes into this for Dark Knight compared to Gunbreaker or Paladin but with that said there is a crucial point to talk about with Dark Knight which involves MP and Blood Gauge. As a Dark Knight overcapping is not really an issue as it doesn't happen if you keep using Edge of Shadow and or TBN for the free charge. However if you're not paying attention or get distracted you are prone to overcamping on MP and Black Blood as well, more so during Blood Weapon windows. So the idea over here is to always try to balance it by using Blood Spur at 50 gauge and keeping your MP below 5000. Now, the key point over here is that knowing a fight and its mechanics makes this a lot easier as you know when TBN would be required, allowing you to dump all your MP into Edge at certain times. For example, End Singer Extreme. By the time you get to the first tank buster, Hubris, you essentially will have 3000 MP ready for TBN, which means you can drop all of your MP into Edge right up until the towers where your blood weapon will come off cooldown, which you can use to get 3000 MP back and prepare for the tank bus. For Living Shadow, as long as you have 50 gauge before it gets off cooldown, you are free to spam Blood Spiller. A GCD combo on average would take you roughly 7 to 7.5 seconds to complete and it will give you 20 gauge. Under Blood Weapon, this same combo will give you 50 Blood Gauge. Now, use this as a baseline to do some quick calculations because once you play the job for a while, it's really easy to keep things rolling without overcapping on your resources. But of course, mistakes happen from time to time. It's natural for them to happen, especially when you're learning because even the best players out there have their worst moments and things happen. But don't fret over it, as long as you're putting in the effort, the work, have proper knowledge, it's all good. 
Just focus on learning and improving, do your research, spend some time at the dummy and experimenting the job, learning encounters and adapting to them it comes with time, but it'll help you improve and it all comes down to repetition and focus. But with that being said, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to show some support. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and I'll catch you all in the next one. See you.